Hello, my name is Adrian, and today I'm going to present explainableai.jl to you, a package that aims to make black box classifiers such as neural networks more interpretable. This package was written as part of Bifold at TU Berlin Machine Learning Group with help from Christopher Anders, Sebastian Lapushkin, and Max Alba. So let's start with the big questions. What is XAI and why would we want to use it? In many domains, deep learning has replaced handwritten rules-based decision-making with large data-driven black boxes. One of the goals of XAI is to open these black boxes and understand their decision-making process, making them more trustworthy, for example, for use in the medical domain. Another use case is debugging neural networks and more specifically spotting spurious correlations, which are also commonly dubbed as clever Hans phenomena. So in this example, we have a neural network classifier that took the image on the left and correctly classified it as a horse. Using explainability methods, we can tell which part of the input caused the classification. When we visualize this explanation as a heat map, we get the image on the right, which clearly shows us that the neural network has not learned the concept of a horse, but rather learned the watermark of this horse photographer. This goes even further. If we remove the watermark, our image doesn't get classified as a horse anymore. And if we add the watermark to an image of a car, suddenly the car gets classified as a horse. To detect such spurious correlations, um, you can use one of several methods that have been implemented. Um, there are sensitivity methods such as gradient, smooth grad, and integrated medians, and attribution methods such as input times gradient and LRP, which is uh, implemented with several rules. Um, the one I will demonstrate today is LRP, which propagates relevance backward from the max activated output neuron, shown here in the middle, um, to the neural, net neural network input. LRP lets you assign different rules to different layers based on their function in the network. So since this is a Julia con talk, you're probably interested in seeing how to use these methods in Julia. So let's move on to a demonstration. Um, most methods in xai.jl can be applied to any function. LRP, however, makes heavy use of multiple dispatch on flux data types. So in this demo, I'll be using LRP to explain a pre-trained VGG16 model from Metalhead. So in this case, we load the model and strip the softmax from it. And then we load an image from uh, ImageNet and convert it to WHCN format, so such that the batch dimension comes last. This is kind of a requisite for um, XAI.jl. So we can take a look at this image. Um, it's a ukulele sitting on top of an upright piano, and um, our image correctly gets classified as an upright piano. So um, now we want to use LRP to explain why this image was classified as a piano. And um, for this, I've selected some LRP rules according to best practice and created an analyzer from the model and these rules. And if we now call analyze using our input, our image, and the analyzer, we get an explanation. This can also be done by calling the analyzer directly. And this explanation, if we take a look at it, contains um, an attribution, the numerical array um, that corresponds to the explanation, the output of our neural network, the neuron selection, which in this case was the maximally activated neuron, and the symbol that tells us um, which analyzer was used. And of course, um, we cannot really understand this numerical array, so we can heat map it using the function heat map. And in this case, um, we get this image here where regions in, in red highlight regions of high relevance and regions in blue um, show us what negatively um, caused this explanation. So we can see that the keys of the piano um, helped in classifying this as an upright piano, whereas the ukulele had negative influence on the classification as a piano. And if we want to skip the step um, of creating an explanation, we can also directly call heat map with the input and the analyzer. We can not only get explanations for the max activated class, but also other classes. For example, in VGG16, output neuron 403 corresponds to the acoustic guitar class. 
and we can pass this index to our analyze and heat map functions and then get a heat map which shows us um, which part of the input contributed towards that class. So in this case, we can see that the ukulele doesn't have negative relevance anymore, but positive relevance, and the piano more or less disappeared from this heat map. Based on the explainability method that we use, heat map will automatically select presets, um, and these presets can be partially or fully overridden. So for example, we can use a different color scheme than this blue, white, red one that I've showed you. And we can also select how the color channels get reduced and how they get mapped to this color scheme. One of the strong points of explainableai.gl is how easy it is to extend and implement custom rules. And if you're interested in this, I recommend to take a look um, at the advanced documentation where I've shown some examples on how to define custom rules by extending a couple of internal functions. So where do we go from here? It would be nice to have Julia implementations for popular methods such as DeepLift, Lime, Shapley values, and PatternNet. Currently, LRP is only supported on Flux chains, and it would be nice to extend it to Flux's parallel layers, which would enable models such as ResNets. It would be nice to have an interface um, for clustering on explanations. This method called Spray helps to find spurious correlations, such as the clever Hans phenomena I've showed you. And lastly, it would be nice to have an interface for pruning by explaining. Um, the package is currently very well tested and benchmarked, so contributions are more than welcome. And if there's any feature that is missing or that you want to see in the package, then please open an issue. Thank you very much for your attention.